Okay, we are going to backtrack to chapter 4, section 6 for electronegativity and bond polarity because in order to focus on solubility, you first have to know how the atoms are reacting with one another. Electronegativity, the actual definition is how much the electrons want to share, or want to take an electron. So how much an atom wants to take on another electron. And that can change in degrees depending on the element and how big the element is, how close the electrons are to the center of the atom, things along those lines. Think of it this way. You're walking down the street. See, here we are. We're walking down the street and you see a quarter on the ground. Okay, you might have a pretty good chance of picking that up because everyone wants another quarter. But let's say you see a dollar bill on the street. You're definitely going to pick that up. The difference in the desires to pick up the coin versus the dollar would be like the differences in an atom to pick up an electron. One electron is more desirable than another. And one atom wants another electron more than the other. So if we look at the chart at the periodic table, fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. Notice that the numbers are increasing as you go up and to the right. So as they get closer to fluorine, the numbers are getting up, getting larger. For instance, 1.6, 1.8, 3.0, 3.5. The numbers are getting bigger as you're getting closer to fluorine. That's going to be important because you're going to have to compare atoms to one another in order to figure out the polarity of the bond. Think of a line graph. So here is the continuum. Over here, these atoms are, over here are shared completely equally. They're shared equally. Not one atom wants uh, the electron more than another. So therefore, the electrons keep going back and forth, and they, they're sharing perfectly. A covalent polar bond Point four, they consider the breakoff. Um, a polar covalent bond is where the differences in the atoms' electronegativity. So when we talk about point four, what we're talking about is if we compare chlorine to, let's say, phosphorus. We have chlorine, which is a 3.0, and we have phosphorus, which is a 2.1. If we compare those two, there's a difference of point nine. So that means that because chlorine is, has a 0.9 amount more of electronegativity than phosphorus, it's going to be over 0.4, between 0.4 and 1.8. The electrons are going to be shared, more, shared unequally, which means that we could say this is chlorine over here and this is phosphorus. Notice that this bubble on the right is actually bigger than this bubble. That means that the electrons are getting pulled over to that side. And even though polar is talking about the opposites, polar opposites, positive and a negative, I think when I remember it, I use polar, it sounds like pulled, so the electrons are being pulled. That's, how, that's the mnemonic device I use to remember it. Whereas if we compare like bromine and iodine. 2.8 for bromine. Iodine is 2.5. There's a difference of 0.3 there. That is under 0.4. So that means those electrons are going to be shared. There is no side bigger than the other. And then we have the absolute extreme over here. Anything bigger than 1.8 is considered ionic. That means that one atom completely has that electron, the other atom does not have any electron whatsoever. That, well, it has electrons, but it doesn't have the one that it just gave up. So if we're looking up here, where the electrons were pulled over, it, think of it as it got pulled so much that it got taken away. And these are going to be our cutoff points when we're doing our calculations. You will not have to memorize this chart. I'll give you the electronegativity. What you may have to do is you may have to 
just be able to look at two atoms, maybe not do the calculation, but say, okay, since they're two different atoms, they're most likely going to be polar, like 2.5 versus fluorine. One thing I would like to note is hydrogen and carbon, just for biochemistry purposes. Notice that carbon is 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1, difference is 0.4. This is considered a nonpolar bond. It has to be above 0.4 in order for it to be polar. So that's going to become very important when we start talking about solubility because most of our cells are made out of carbon and hydrogen. All of our cells are made out of carbon and hydrogen. So that actually becomes really important when we talk about biological functions. So carbon-hydrogen is a nonpolar bond. Remember that. That's important. So as I was saying, the difference between nonpolar and polar. So here's the electron for hydrogen, here's the electron for this hydrogen. They come together because it's a nonpolar, because they're the same element, so they're being shared equally. So it's hydrogen bonded with hydrogen. So it's 2.1 minus 2.1. That's obviously going to be zero, which means it's nonpolar, which means it's in this range. Those electrons are in the middle and they share amongst the two atoms. Whereas here, if we're looking at chlorine and hydrogen, they come together. This is that electron, this is the chlorine electron. They've come together. If we look at a comparison of those, hydrogen is still 2.1. Chlorine is right here. It's 3.0. That comes out to be two or 0.9 which means it's in the polar range right here. That means that those electrons are going to be dragged closer to chlorine and away from the hydrogen. Notice this symbol in this symbol. That is a Greek symbol. It's a lowercase delta. It's like an S that keeps going. And it means partial. So that means partially negative partially positive. So, so give you some ideas. Nitrogen, nitrogen bond, 3.0, 3.0. Anything bonded to itself is automatically going to be nonpolar. Any nonmetal bonded to itself will automatically be nonpolar. If they do have a difference in electronegativity, it's going to be very small. It's not going to be a huge. Remember, 0.4 is the cutoff. All right, so polar is between nonmetal. Notice that these are all different. It's not chlorine and chlorine. It's chlorine and oxygen. So that means that the electronegativities are going to be different. They're all above 0.4. So there's going to be a small, a, a moderate, a medium level electronegativity. And then ionic, the difference is going to be rather large. It's going to be above a 1.8. Note that sulfur and cesium is right at the cusp. Typically, it's going to be a metal and a nonmetal. So if you're looking at this and you see a metal, potassium's a metal, sodium's a metal, cesium is a metal. Remember on the periodic table, this is the separation of the metals and nonmetals. If it's on this side, if you see something to the left of the squiggly line, that's a metal. That means it's automatically going to have an ionic bond in something from this side, which is a nonmetal. So, less than 0.4, between 0.4 and 1.8, and greater than 1.8. That's how you classify the differences. Notice that the difference in writing partially negative, yet this one's completely negative. There is no partial sign. Remember, a partial is an S that keeps going. A negative, partially positive. All right, so let's do some practice. K and N. Well, first thing you want to do is examine the element. If you look at the periodic table, Potassium is around here somewhere. 
nitrogen is here. You have one side that's a metal and one that's a non-metal. Chances are it's going to be ionic, but let's double check. So potassium is here. Nitrogen is here. So 3.0 minus 0 0.8. 2.2, and that's obviously above a 1.8. So it's above 1.8, which means it's ionic. Plus, it has a metal and non-metal. That's the other way you tell. All right, nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen is here. Oxygen is also in there. That means when we're looking at the periodic table, here's nitrogen, here's oxygen. They're both non-metal, so our, ch our choices are either polar covalent or non-polar covalent. So 3.5 minus 3.0, to find the difference, comes out to be 0 0.5. That is between 0.4 and 1.8, which means that is, so it's 0 0.5, which means it is polar. Chlorine and chlorine, the exact same element. Right here on the periodic table. Right here. 3.0. Anything that's bonded to itself is automatically a nonpolar. That is a zero for its electronegativity difference, which means it is nonpolar. And then finally, HCl. Here's Cl, 3.0, here's H, 2.1. They're both non-metals, which means it cannot be ionic. It's either polar or non-polar. 3.0 minus 2.1, and that comes out to be 0 0.9. That is between 0.4 and 1.8, which is making it polar. Those are the answers once again. And that is the end of 4.6. Now that we know the training activities, we can talk more about solutions in the next, next section.